All right, this is second grade module seven, lesson 11. And in this lesson, students are gonna be using different strategies to make change for a dollar. For example, um, if you have a dollar and we're gonna subtract out 35 cents, uh, what would that answer be? Well, a different way of making change would be to say, let's start with 35 and figure out what we have to build up to get to 100. And that's the same thing as 100 minus 35. So it's uh, a re kind of a, an opportunity to review topics from module five, where students really did learn the official algorithm for subtracting, even when you have some zeros up in that first top number. But this is also giving students a new strategy. It's kind of like the arrow method where students are starting with that lower number and figuring out what do they have to add in order to get to the bigger number. So let's get started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna count up using that arrow method in order to complete the number sentence. And then we're gonna use coins if we need to uh, to check our answers. So the idea is, well, we're going to start with 25 cents. What do we need to add to get to 100? And some students might be able to do that in one fell swoop, just boom, instantly know that the answer is 75 cents. But other students down here, they might want to go incrementally. So let's see, 25 plus 5 gives us 30, and then 30 plus 70 gives us a hundred and so therefore the total that we needed to add is 75 cents right there boom all right uh, 75 cents and if we wanted to we could check with coins uh, similarly oh let's do oh let's do uh, D D says well if we're gonna start with 79 cents what do we need to add well one thing we could do is add a one and that gives us 80 and then I can add 20, and that gets us to 100. So our total that we added is 21 cents. And that's the arrow method. So parents and teachers, this might look from, uh, unfamiliar to you. In fact, a lot of you might say, duh, why don't we just subtract 100 minus 79? And yes, of course, that absolutely works. I mean, we know that, well, you have zero ones, take away nine ones, so we have to go all the way to the hundreds. And we're going to exchange that hundred for ten tens. And then we're going to exchange one of those tens for ten ones. And so now we can subtract ten ones minus nine ones is one one. And then nine tens take away seven tens is two tens. And so we've got 21, which is exactly what we knew all along. So the idea would be you could either subtract using that standard algorithm or we can um, practice this other strategy for adding up in order to figure out the missing value. And really, we want to em uh, empower our students with as many different strategies as they can uh, especially keeping in, uh, keeping careful to make sure that the students understand each of the methods. We don't want to teach them five methods and they have they don't understand any of them. So when we teach a method, we want to make sure the students understand it. And to boot, as our bonus, we want to teach them multiple methods. So again, this might be unfamiliar for uh, parents and teachers from the olden days. We have the arrow method that I just talked about on the previous slide, but this is also a return to the number bond that we did in previous modules. So the idea would be, let's start with that 19. And what do we need to add? Well, let's add one. That bump bumps us up to 20. And if we want, at this point, we might be able to just jump straight to 80, 80 cents. Um, gives us a hundred. So what did we add all together? Oh, we added 81 cents. So what is our number bond going to look like? Well, you have a dollar here, and then you had 19 cents because that's one of the values being added, and then 81 cents is the other uh, portion of that number bond. And so the idea is when we see a subtraction, we want our students to understand that that could be thought of as an addition 
with a missing addend problem. So 53 plus what gives us 100? And so rather than using that standard algorithm with all the borrowing and stuff that students might make a mistake on, uh, sometimes adding mentally is a more efficient and more accurate way, less prone to making a mistake. So we're going to add 7. That bumps us up to 60. And then we can add 40, and that gets us straight to our dollar, 100 cents. And so what did we add all together? Well, we added... 47 cents. So that is the subtraction. So what would our number bond look like? Our number bond, one way we could do it is 100 cents, or we could write uh, uh, $1, your choice. And our two missing portions of the number bond, we had 53 cents, and we had 47 cents. And keep in mind that these could be swapped because of the commutative property. And the last slide for this video, solve. And then we're just going to let students choose whatever method they want um, in order to get these missing values. So using the arrow method, because I think for teachers and parents, that's the one they might want to get more familiar with. So we're going to add 2 to get 40. And then we can add 60 to get to 100. So our missing value was 62 cents. Now, of course, keep in mind, we could always use the standard algorithm as well uh, because we learned that in Module 5. And so the uh, standard algorithm is that classic, we have no, I'm going to go back here, we have no 1s, no 10s. So we're going to take one of the, this 100 and regroup it, and that's going to give us 10 tens, and then I'm going to take one of those tens, and that gives us ten ones. So now we have ten ones, nine tens, and no hundreds. So nine tens and ten, ten ones equals a hundred. And then, of course, we could subtract. Ten minus eight is two. Nine tens minus three tens is six tens. So the answer is 62, which we knew all along. So since it says just solve, we could use any technique we want. We could use the arrow method. We could use that standard algorithm. It's totally up to you and your students. And that wraps up second grade module 7, lesson 11, where students are using a variety of different strategies to take from 100.